Welcome to Los Cabos. Los Cabos is the region at the southern tip of the Baja Peninsula. Many people don't know that Los Cabos is actually made up of two different towns, San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas is typically known for its party scene and luxury resorts, while San Jose del Cabo is quieter and known for its laid back vibes and its historical culture. These two cities are about 35 to 40 minutes apart. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on where to stay, what to do, and some general advice so you can have the best trip possible. First, let's talk about where you should stay. San Jose del Cabo, Cabo San Lucas, or the Corridor. On our very first trip to Cabo, we stayed at the Marquise, which is located in the Corridor. The Corridor is a stretch of coastline between Cabo San Lucas and San Jose. If you're staying in the Corridor, I would recommend doing an all-inclusive package because food at the resorts is not cheap and driving into town for every meal would be costly and time consuming. For example, the Marquise is about 25 minutes from Cabo San Lucas and 15 minutes from San Jose. On our most recent trip, we stayed at the Playa Grande, which was located in Cabo San Lucas and was conveniently only five minute walk from the downtown marina. We found the location to be perfect. Because we were so close to the marina, we chose not to do an all-inclusive and just ate locally. I made another video about our stay at the Playa Grande. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it below in the description. We've never stayed in San Jose, but did a bit of exploring there on our last trip and would definitely consider staying here in the future. Make the decision based on what kinds of activities that you want to see and do. So what's the best time of year to visit? Los Cabos is very dry and warm for most of the year. If you visit in the winter months, there tends to be more crowds and higher prices as many people are trying to escape the cold weather. But you're also gonna have a good chance of spotting a whale. Temperatures can range from 60 to 80 degrees. Cabo starts warming up in March with average temperatures in the 80s. April and May are the driest months with almost no rain at all. If you don't like crowds, you might wanna avoid April because many people are on spring break. June through August are the best months to visit if you're into surfing. August and September is the hot and rainy season. When we visited in August, it was very hot and humid. We were only there for five nights and experienced two rainy days due to a tropical storm off the coast. However, an advantage of traveling during this time is there tends to be fewer crowds and better deals. August is also the beginning of sea turtle season. On our last trip, we visited in November and found the weather to be absolutely perfect. How are you going to get around town and get to your hotel once you land at the airport? We chose to rent a car on our most recent trip to Cabo and had a great experience. A shuttle picked us up right outside the airport and took us across the street to our rental car company, Cactus. I made a video with some tips about driving in Mexico and our experience with Cactus, which I'll link below in the description. If you decide not to rent a car, it's important to note that Ubers and Lyfts are not allowed at the airport. I highly recommend booking a private transfer from the airport to your hotel to maximize time spent on vacation and avoid multiple stops at other hotels which you would encounter with a shared shuttle. We've used TransCabo in the past and had a great experience. When traveling around town, Ubers and Lyfts are an affordable option compared to taxis. Typically, you won't be able to get picked up at your hotel lobby, but there are plenty of designated areas just outside the resorts. We found them to be no more than five to seven minutes away and will cost you one third the price of a taxi. Most of the beaches in Cabo are not swimmable due to the rocky terrain, steep drop-offs, and strong rip currents. However, many of the resorts make up for it with their amazing pools. Check with each resort before you book your trip. If you're looking to take a dip in the ocean, you have a few options, including Lover's Beach and Madonna Beach in Cabo San Lucas and Chileno Beach, which is located along the corridor. Make your trip complete by booking an excursion. There are all sorts of activities, including horseback riding, camel rides, zip lining, and boat tours. One of our favorite things to do is an ATV tour. Rain or shine, it's always a blast. In the past, we've booked tours with Amigos and Cactus. While both are great, we definitely preferred Amigos. If you want more details about the terrain and what to expect, I made another video about this as well and it'll be linked in the description. If you don't want to commit to a time frame and prefer some flexibility on your vacation, there are plenty of vendors in the marina who can assist you with booking a tour once you arrive. A quick must do is catching a water taxi over to Lover's Beach. You don't need to plan this, just go to the marina and there'll be plenty of people offering you a ride. We booked ours during breakfast one morning for $10 per person. You can even make a day of it and bring some ice cold drinks, snacks, sunscreen, and a towel. If you decide to stay in Cabo San Lucas, make sure you check out San Jose because the two towns are very different and you don't wanna miss experiencing the rich historical culture and amazing food. Speaking of amazing food, a popular destination you may want to consider visiting is Flora Farms. Flora Farms is a 25-acre organic working farm located just north of San Jose del Cabo. They are primarily known for their amazing farm-to-table restaurant. The property also has a shopping area, a spa, cooking classes, and more. 
make sure you make your reservation online ahead of time. Here's some random tips that will help you have a safe and enjoyable trip. Many of the people we encountered in Cabo spoke English, but it's a good idea to have Google Translate on your phone and even better, know a few words yourself and practice before you go. On our trips to Cabo, we found that the US dollar was widely accepted. You're going to want to bring plenty of cash and remember that the Mexican service industry relies heavily on tips. Cash tips can go very fast. Don't forget to tip your drivers, your guides, your gas station staff, and your waiters and waitresses, even if you're staying at an all-inclusive. Watch out for timeshare scams. We ran into these when we picked up our rental car and when we first arrived at our resort. Just say no thank you and keep moving. The safety of the tap water is a debatable topic. While on vacation, we'd rather be safe than sorry, so we choose to drink only bottled water. When we used certain credit cards, there was an additional 3-5% to surcharge. Travel credit cards tend to avoid these, but always check with your credit card company before you go. I had a bunch of charges on one of my credit cards when I returned home, but luckily I was able to call my bank and get these waived. If you guys have any questions about planning your upcoming trip to Cabo, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next video.